Hello, detectives, and welcome to episode four of the Deception Detective Podcast. Uh, today, we're going to analyze a video that Russell Brand put out yesterday on Twitter, denying some allegations against him. And if you've seen my old videos, you know that I like to examine and study denial videos. My channel started off examining denial videos of gamers who denied cheating as well as uh, people who I suspect were taking steroids, but claim that they were natural. And denials are very simple to analyze as long as you pay attention to what is actually being said. So in a denial video, we're looking for an immediate direct denial. So any amount of preface to the words, I'm innocent or I didn't do it, is usually a sign of deception, right? That the person's putting off saying the lie. Also, after the denial, right? After saying, I didn't do it, for example, any extra words after that is usually a sign of deception because it's unnecessary persuasion typically. So I can already see this is almost a three minute video from Russell Brand. So uh, that's really not ideal. So let's watch it together and see what we think. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Now, this isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where we critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an... Now, my personal opinion of Russell Brand isn't going to factor into this analysis as much as I can make sure it doesn't, right? So bias is almost impossible to get out completely. I think Russell was really funny in getting to the Greek and forgetting Sarah Marshall. But already we can see that he's setting the table to make this look like it's a media conspiracy against him. So already he's starting off by saying that the media is corrupt and he's uh, prefacing his denial, if he does deny this, with uh, some persuasion, right? That the media is not to be trusted. Let's start it over. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Now, this isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where we critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received... If you're following along, his preface is that he attacks and critiques the media. And I think he's going to imply that this is a retaliation against him from the media. Remember, if you're innocent, you go straight to the denial. You just say, the allegations against me are untrue. I'm innocent. This publication's lying. All those are great denials. And when we examined gamers in my early videos, uh, we looked at two who I believed were telling the truth. And one of them was the GeoGuessr player I uh, forget his name at the moment, but his video started off saying, no, I do not cheat. It was a perfect denial. There was no preface. And after he made the denial, then he proved that he didn't cheat, right? Then he said, okay, now I'm going to show you how I play. Russell has not denied anything yet. And it looks like he's doing some unnecessary persuasion. He's trying to set the table uh, and prime us to think of the media as against him all right off the bat. So let's start it over one more time. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Now, this isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where we critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company. The fact that he calls the letters extremely disturbing is also a red flag. If these were obvious hoaxes, there's no reason for him to call them disturbing especially extremely disturbing, right? When something can actually get you in trouble, that's when it's extremely disturbing. When something's an obvious hoax, that's when you laugh it off. So we're only 18 seconds in, but Russell's not off to a good start. one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks as well as some pretty stupid stuff like uh, my community festival. Do you notice how here he said they were extremely egregious attacks? That's a proper use of extremely, right? If these were fake saying they're extremely egregious makes sense. But for him to say they're extremely disturbing refers to himself, right? He is disturbed by them, which is a sign of guilt. 
also, uh, I'm, I'm, I can predict this in the comments already. Somebody might say, hey, his lawyer wrote this for him or his publicist wrote this script for him. I don't think they did. But even if they did, they will reveal what they believe in what they wrote for him. So if he has a lawyer looking into this or his publicist looks into this, they likely know the truth and that will come through in what they wrote for him. But at this point, I don't think anyone wrote this for Russell. People should be stopped that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These Saying I absolutely refute something is not the same thing as saying it isn't true. That's a very important point, and it's a nuance that get, gets lost all the time. Saying I, uh, I'm going to fight this, right? Or like Nadia said with her cheating allegations, I'm going to uh, crush these allegations. Or Zelaner saying, I'm going to combat these allegations. That's not the same thing as saying I'm going to prove them wrong. So this is the close, closest Russell has come to a denial in, he's been talking for 43 seconds, and it's not a direct denial. Saying you refute something is not the same thing as saying it's wrong or saying the accuser is lying or saying that you're innocent, right? Those are very different things. Refuting something is something a guilty person can do. I can refute something all day and still have done it. But I can't prove something false if it actually happened. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about Unnecessary persuasion. Uh, honest people don't typically use intensifiers when they speak. So if someone uh, didn't do something, they just say, I didn't do it. It's that simple because they stand behind the wall of truth. When we see intensifiers like I absolutely didn't do it or I 100% did not do that. Those are red flags for deception. And it's another way, like I said, for someone to, they know they're guilty, so they're trying to persuade you more. And also it's extra words, right? Something to lengthen the amount of time they have to get to the big lie, right? Saying, I didn't do it is reliable. Saying, I absolutely did not do it 100% for sure is unreliable. So good rule of thumb for statement analysts to use uh, on your own, right? If you're analyzing someone talking to you on the fly is the shorter the denial, the better. So if you're confronting, let's say you think an employee uh, stole, uh, let's say you think a colleague stole your lunch out of the refrigerator. If you say, hey, what happened to my lunch? Did you take it? And they say, no, right? I didn't take your lunch. That's reliable. They probably didn't do it. If they say, how could you accuse me? I, I would never do that. I absolutely did not take your lunch. Alarm bell should be going off in your head that you found the lunch thief. Let's keep listening. About it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? Right. So I absolutely deny I refute. That's not the same thing as saying I didn't do it. So, uh, so far, I like Russell Brand, but I'm not going to uh, let him off the hook. Unless he says I didn't do it himself, we won't put those words into his mouth. particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, when he dared to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of. And we saw a spate of headlines from media outlets across the world using the same language. This is really concerning now. Now he's drawing in other people like Joe Rogan into his denial. Uh, that's unnecessary persuasion. And what he's trying to do here is, it looks like he's trying to do partisan, right? He's trying to get all the Joe Rogan fans to be on his side simply because 
he's trying to paint this as if it's analogous to Joe Rogan's situation. This is totally different than Joe Rogan's situation. And it reminds me of uh, Brian Callen, right? When he was accused of uh, inappropriate actions with girls, uh, he, he also said, hey, they're trying to take me down like Joe Rogan. If you're innocent, you don't need to involve other people in your denial. You can just say, I didn't do it. They're lying. In fact, I'm going to sue them for libel. So this is really concerning at this point. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you. You're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles. Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist. Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And now, what, another part of statement analysis that I, don't, I haven't talked about in my most recent episodes is we let the speaker's words guide us. So I'm not going into this thinking, hey, Russell's a liar. Let's nail him. I'm actually letting Russell's own words guide me. So unless Russell says, I'm innocent or I didn't do it, I won't put those words into his mouth. As soon as he says those words, then I'll change my analysis. But we're almost two minutes into this, and he hasn't said he's innocent. He hasn't said he didn't do what he's alleged to have done. He said it's a conspiracy theory, and that might be true, right? I don't put it past the media to try to dig up stuff on him to take him down. But so far, it looks like even if he's right about that, even if this is a conspiracy theory, he hasn't denied the underlying actions. And that's what's concerning. Right. So it, it, this is a denial video. This is a denial analysis. And so far, we don't have an actual denial. Right. He's saying he's fighting these claims. He's saying that they're probably unfair against him and that they're dug up for a political agenda. It's a big conspiracy. Even if all that is true, he hasn't denied doing what they said he did. So don't let him off the hook for that. Also, I'm just one guy. This is my opinion. In the court of law, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. But so far, this denial is very weak. It's not satisfactory to me. And I mean my voice along with your voice. I don't mind them using my books and my stand up to talk about my promiscuous consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there Right, again, are the, if he's calling this serious allegations, serious to who? They're serious to him. And I think that's him leaking that these are true. He knows that this is a serious situation. And if it never happened, there's no reason for it to be serious to him. Right, if these are some crazy accusers, like Amber Heard v. Johnny Depp, uh, Johnny Depp v. Amber Heard, right? If, if it's very clear that, so, that the accuser is BSing, you don't call them extremely dangerous to me, right? You just say these are extremely crazy accusations or these are unbelievable accusations. Are you just straight up saying the accusers are lying? It'd be nice if he said that, but he's not saying that. He's saying these are nefarious people, but he hasn't said they're lying. But there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Now, I don't want to get into Once this. again, even if this is a coordinated attack, that doesn't change the fact that he hasn't denied the underlying action. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Even if we accept everything he said so far is true, right? I, uh, he hasn't lied once. Let's say everything he said is true. He hasn't denied the underlying action. That's the main point of this video. It's a huge point, right? You can refer to this video in any future denial video. The rule is the same. Unless they deny it themselves, we can't put those words into their, their mouths. This any further because of the serious nature of the allegations, but I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly they are working very closely together. We are obviously going to look into this matter because it's very, very serious. In the meantime, I want you to stay close, 
stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can. And that's another weak phrase, right? We're going to look into this matter. Let's listen to that again. That sounds like something, uh, that actually sounds like something a lawyer or a publicist wrote. And notice how telling it is, right? Let's listen to it again, I'll explain why it's so telling, if you haven't figured it out yet. Very serious. In the meantime, I want you to stay close, stay away, coordinated attack. Now, I don't want to get into this any further because of the serious nature of the allegations, but I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly they are working very closely together. We are obviously going to look into this matter because it's very, very serious. So if someone accused you of not even something as serious as what he's being accused of, and I don't want to say the word because YouTube has slammed my channel so many times, especially when I did those Andrew Tate videos for using a word that rhymes with grape. So uh, let's say you didn't even do something as bad as what I think Russell's being accused of. Let's say you stole uh, 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 someone's uh, lunch, right, from uh, their office fridge, and they said, you stole my lunch. How would you reply? Would you say, I'm going to look into this matter, right? If you were innocent, would you say, I'm going to look into it? Or would you say, I didn't take your lunch, right? So the fact that he's using this soft language, right, we're going to look into it is concerning, right? When someone's innocent and they've been wrongly accused, they deny it. He hasn't denied it. Did we finish the video? In the meantime, I want you to stay close, stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. So he spoke for two minutes, 45 seconds. He did not deny the allegations. And that is a failure. So far, as far as I'm concerned, I think Russell Brand is likely guilty of what he's being accused of. And he, just like anyone, struggles to tell a direct lie. When you're actually guilty, it's almost impossible to give a reliable denial. If he was innocent, I would expect him to say, I didn't do anything I'm alleged. I didn't do any of the things they alleged. I'm innocent. They're lying. And I would also expect him to launch a countersuit for libel. But I don't think they've published these stories yet, right? I, I, all I've seen is this video so far. So as far as this video goes, unfortunately, I know a bunch of people like Russell Brand, uh, as far as his humor goes, he's probably guilty. Uh, that's my prediction based on the statement analysis here. And if he does give us a direct denial in the future, I'll be sure to cover that. But right now, there's no denial here, right? He has not denied it. Until next time, stay true.